If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You have to skip and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. This is, uh, this is uh, light listening on a, uh, what was it, Tuesday night? Yeah, the last song was a rough one. Let's see what this one, it's called Lies. <laughs> Kim Chucha? Chuja? This song is written and produced by Shin Jung Hyun, godfather of Korean rock. He reacted to his song Beautiful Rivers and Mountains. He became popular around military bases in the 60s. In addition to his own songs, he would produce and write for other performers with Kim Chuja. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Being one of them, their first songs recorded together was in 1969. One of these songs, Sergeant Kim Back from Viet Vietnam, was sung in the, the film Parasite. Oh, remember that one? Yeah. She was scandalous for the time in that she wore tight-fitting clothing. The police used to walk the streets making sure men's hair was short and women's skirts were the right length. Are you kidding me? This produces an image of conservatism but this government ran prostitution camps and U.S. bases, around U.S. bases. Last October, the Korean court said the government needed to pay, attend, pay the reparations to these victims. Officials would tell these girls, often teenagers, having lost their families in the war, what the fuck, they were patriots. Recently, New York Times quoted a 62-year-old saying, they say we walk into... Can you, can you say just get strong on our own? But we were cheated by job placement agencies and were held in debt to pimps. I was only a teenager and I had to receive at least five GIs every day with no day off. When I ran away, they caught and beat me, raising my debt. This song was raised, released in 1971. The song was banned on the grounds that it breeds distrust. Her manager attacked her with a broken bottle when she refused his proposal for marriage and had to get facial surgery. What the? Her career largely ended when most rock musicians were arrested on marijuana charges in 1975. One of those, Shin Joing Hyun, a songwriter of this song, was put in a mental hospital until his assass assassination of, of the then direct, uh, dictator Park in 1979. Jeez. Oh, yay, okay, Ugh. let's go. It's gotta be her, right? Her? That's that's yeah. Her. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's the Cody Maria. Cody Maria, Cody Maria, Cody Maria, Cody Maria. Sarando, Cody Maria, Usundo, Cody Maria. 
거짓말이야 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 사랑도 거짓말 웃음도 거짓말 그렇게도 잊었나 세월 따라 잊었나 웃음 속에 만나고 눈물 속에 헤어져 다시 살아가는 우리 그대 잊으리 그대 나를 만나고 나를 버렸지 나를 버렸지 거짓말이야 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 그렇게도 잊었나 세월 따라 잊었나 웃음 속에 만나고 눈물 속에 헤어져 다시 사랑한 우리 그대 잊으리 그대 나를 만나고 나를 버렸지 나를 버렸지 거짓말이야 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 It's amazing to me that uh, going through all that, she still wanted to be in a relationship at one point. Yeah, I don't. Was this <clears throat> was this before or after all of that? Well, it must have been after. I mean, she was how old was she? Fifty. Well, how old was she when that? When when the guy went after her with the bottle? No, she was. Wasn't she part of the thing with the the GIs and all that shit? No, no, that, no. She was quoting. Recently, New York Times quoted a 62-year-old saying they walked us in. Gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha, was... gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So that's the context that she came out of. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Um, man, talk about the universality of uh, <laughs> experience. Uh, yeah. So she's saying that love and smiles are a lie. And then the, the meat of it, it's, it's in the middle. It's really forgotten like that. Forgotten with the time. Met in the smiles and parting in tears. I will never love you again. I will. Forget. I will never love again. You have love you again. I'll never love again. Yeah. Yeah, that is different for sure. Um, I, I will, will forget, forget you. you. I have tried for half an hour to get a sweater. <laughs> huh? BC's trying to get a sweater from LL Bean. I think. He says you're from Maine. Why is it so difficult to buy a sweater from LL Bean? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I think that... Yeah, like, the, these things are, uh, uh, it's just universal, I guess. Dude what? lied to her. Yeah. You know, we got, you know, he's doing his thing with her for a little bit, and then he, and off he went. Love is a lie. Smiles are lies, too. Ugh. What? What, what about, what about that? Well, well, like, love isn't a lie, and smiles aren't always lies, but when, when you've been betrayed like that, and then you feel that way, it's a kind of a dark place to be in. And then, well, you what know, makes you think the guy betrayed her? Because the person was, well, oh, I was just looking at smiles or lies too. I was looking at it as that they, you know, how like at the end of a relationship, I, I don't know if you're, from, you might not be familiar with this, but like at the end of a relationship, I, I've seen it a bunch of times. The person that's about to end it doesn't always put that out that it's like we're having trouble like they'll just act like everything's okay and then they'll just be like okay that's it it's not working yeah but how is that a betrayal 
because you put you put out your smiles like everything's okay and then you s slam it on somebody at the last second that actually no it's not okay so then those lies weren't those smiles were not necessarily real because that love wasn't necessarily real because you guys were at a different place than you said that you were and you just kind of like ended it abruptly I don't know that's kind of oversimplistic to me because it's like I mean it most people are uncomfortable with the breakup. Uh, like, I don't think, like, if one person wants to break up but the other person doesn't, there's no way that that other person, unless they're really mature, there's no way that the person who got broke up with is going to characterize it as anything other than the, the person yeah. was a bad person, they did something bad to you. And then what ends up happening is when a relationship ends, you know, reaches the end of the life cycle, we tend to go back and revise history you can say all oh, that was fake you never really loved me blah 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 mm -hmm. it's like i mean that's not necessarily true right. it just means that he doesn't right. love you anymore but it doesn't mean that he he didn't love you before it doesn't mean that love is a lie it just meant that you guys didn't work out but how, how can you how you know but that seems to be kind of like like an overreaction and she's not even claiming that the dude betrayed her in this she's just saying that basically that it looks here when she says forgotten like that, forgotten with the time. It seems more of a I'm a left behind type of energy than I got betrayed type of energy. You just you just forgot about us or you you've you know, the love kind of waned over time and it, it, it got to the point where it was so thin that you didn't even remember yeah. it's almost like you didn't remember me, that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So and even like she says forgotten with the time, met in met in the smiles and parting in the tears. Like so even though when it was done, like they, there was still like some tears about it, but then yeah, you're, like you said, it's it's was it forgotten just like that. Even though it seemed like even at the end, like there was some significance, but then it's completely forgotten. It's interesting. She says, "After you met me, you left me." So, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's just kind of like a so. So there's like no there's no gap. There's no gap. You know how they, they say like, you know, there's a yeah. when you were born and when you die, and your life is in that little gap, that dash. little dash. There's no dash. It's just. Yeah. You met me, you left me type of thing. Mm -hmm. It, You know, this was a major issue in high school is when I really became aware of this dynamic. I didn't have a father to explain, you know, how to manage myself with females or how to manage my inclinations. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have, and my mom and I didn't have the kind of relationship where we were talking about that. Mm -hmm. Like my mom... Like, I, I remember overhearing her say, like, they're becoming men. Like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember her talking to her friends in the in the room, and, you know. And so, like, she didn't really talk. So I didn't really have a good understanding of how, not even women, but, I mean, we were kids. I mean, 15, 14, 15, 16-year-olds. Like, how they interpreted sex and sexuality, you know, the when i when we were coming up we were here it was about being a player and this and that so it was a game and i'm i'm very competitive and so oh i want to get the prettiest girl and if i can you know what blah 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 with the prettiest girl then boom and i'm competing with drug dealers and yada 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 so that was my mindset like th there was no like concept of hey if a girl yeah. gives this to you um it's it's a very big deal yeah it's a very big and and if you're doing things like holding her hand and kissing her by and walking her to class and and slipping her notes in her book bag and all this like she's not looking at it like there is a game happening she's looking at it as this oh my real. god this dude yeah. i wasn't told that so when i get these reactions i i initially i remember being very confused and angry you know, because they were not good reactions. I mean, girls are allowed to hit dudes in public, all types yeah. of shit. So I remember, like, the first time, like, a girl smacked me. I was like, what the fuck? Like, yo, this girl slapped me, bro. And I, I just remember being like, I was so confused. You know, yeah. the car showed up and, like, she tried to. And, but it, the thing is, I was. <laughs> I'll have mercy on this girl. But one of my best friends at the time was like, this seems like this hardcore, like, lesbian. Like, she had a butch attitude with like a femme body almost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Toki. <laughs> and like, so she was like, 
if anybody could have should have explained that to me, it would have been her. But she had the same mindset as me. it was horrible <laughs> because, like, you know what I'm saying? So, wow. So there was no. I'm not making excuses myself. I was a, a horrible, hor horrible human being. Like I'm not, you know. But but you know, I'd send her or whatever. Anytime I got you know I, I got assaulted, we'd send her to go take care of business in the in the mm. girls' locker room because I'm not gonna let you smack me in my face, bro. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, it, it took me a really, really long time, you know, to, to, to sit back and, and understand what was going on. And and the girls at the time couldn't say, hey, that hurt me or blah, 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 because, you know, there's ego and power dynamics and all types of shit that's going on. So she doesn't, do want, she doesn't want to admit that you, you know, whatever. What do you think would have happened if one of those girls would have come up and said, hey, that like really hurt me, blah, blah, blah. Like, what would you, what do you think you would have done with that? It would have stopped me in my tracks for sure. Oh, really? I don't know if it would have stopped my behavior, but it would, you know, it, it, it would have, it would have been a long train ride home, but none of that communication was happening. It was just, oh, you're, you're this, you're that, you ain't, you ain't shit anyway, blah, 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 blah. You still take the train to school, you know, all the, all the other, and you know, I'm like, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then, you know, it just kept going back and forth and then it escalated and, and, and shit got, you know, kinetic or whatever. But. So that's, I'm looking at it from that perspective. Like, I'm not sure that he necessarily betrayed her. Um, I just think that, you know, that was the end of the line for him. And, uh, I, you know, I hate to, like, the, the quicker, the less work it takes to get to that destination, the less likely it is that he's going to stick around. I'm just, you know. It's just that's just how it is, yeah. You know, and I understand with girls and relationships, like we, we're watching it with this manosphere bullshit. There's a lot of pressure on them to put out, but then when they do that, there's that loss of respect, and it's harder for the dude to stay. But then if she doesn't do it, then there's going to be a loss of interest because there's these other girls trying to get to him. Yeah, it's but, like impossible to win. No, I don't think it's impossible to win because the type of guy that. Okay, and I'm sure you're gonna have some something to say about this, but like the type of guy, their guys are they're they're looking for one thing or another. Are they looking for the relationship or are they looking for sex? If they're looking for the relationship, then I think that they're gonna stick it out. Like if they if they actually want to say, hey, is there a future here or not? Like I think that when they're in that serious place, they're not gonna throw out an act an actual good candidate because they won't have sex with them. I think if somebody was like, oh, that's somebody I could build a future with then they would continue on in that relationship. If they're only there for the sex and the girl doesn't give up the sex, then, or if they're there predominantly for the sex and like maybe something could come out of it, then yeah, if you don't, if they don't, if the girl doesn't give it up, then the guy's going to be like, see ya, because actually that's what he's looking for. So if you just, you know, and, and I hate, I hate it when they say that in the manosphere, like, okay, because you, let's say a girl has a history where she's, She's just given it up too easily, and now she's at a she's at a more mature point in her life, and she's like, shoot, I shouldn't have done that. Like, why did I do that? Like, I'm feeling personally degraded. I'm not feeling like, like I'm like you're. It's feeling less and less and less each time. And then she says, you know what? Let me make a change. Like, let me actually start trying to find somebody that I can build something with. And I'm not gonna just give it up like that because every time I do, I feel like shit. I'm not doing it. And then she ends up in a relationship. She she ends up kind of like hanging out with some guy, and, and that's all he's about. Well, he's gonna leave because he's not trying to go toward that relationship. He's he's wanting the sex. Yeah, is it as simple as that? It's a, it's all the guy's about. Like there's no there's no like middle. I mean, no, obviously I for me, I don't think there should be any sex before marriage because we're Christians. But if you don't hold to that worldview, there, there's no like line to where you know like. So how long should he? How long does he have to wait before you don't classify him as a scumbag for wanting to have sex? Well, I, I think he wants to have sex right at the beginning. It doesn't make him every a scumbag dude, every for dude, wanting sex. I every mean, dude wants to have sex at the beginning. I think lots of guys want to have sex at the beginning. That doesn't make you a okay. scum. I don't think that makes somebody a scumbag. I okay, think that okay. makes you normal. All right, go ahead. Like, and I think there's lots so of the girls, girls that, don't want to have sex at the beginning. I I meant hella girls that want to have sex. Literally, was just beginning. in the middle of saying. I think that also there's lots of girls that want to have sex right at the beginning. Rest of girls, man. I'll yeah. Tell you what. Yeah, but, but you have to recognize that that is something that is very, ex it's extremely special in a relationship, like, when when you guys can are connecting at a, like, you're trying to know each other, you're trying to build together, like, that's something that's, like, awesome. 
But if it's something that you're just, you know, you're just throwing it out all over the place, it's it's going to have a deleterious effect. It, it, there's no other way around it. Yeah, I think, you know, in the in the early aughts, you had this whole, like, friends with benefits stuff, blah, blah, blah. And it's, once again, it was just a Ponzi scheme that benefited dudes. You know, I, I, I don't think... You get 10 girls, I don't think it's possible. Also that, like, being the cool girlfriend. Oh, I'm fine with him going to the bar. I'm fine with him going to the the strip club. I'm fine with him. Like, there's tons of girls still saying that. I, I, have, I find that so extremely hard to believe that people are completely fine with their man going to some strip club. Well, yeah, it, it, but... Especially, like, if they're in a serious specifically relationship. Specifically with the hookup hook up culture stuff, it's like, or, or the, the friends with benefits stuff, it's like, oh, we could just have, we're friends, so we're having an emotional connection, and we could just have sex, and it'll it'll just be that, and blah, blah, blah. Like, it never worked. 99% of the time, the girl caught feelings, and the guy was yeah. was off with, with, the, with, with his real interest. So... It, it's it's a hard landscape, man, to navigate. It really is. And that's why, like, it's very fascinating. Like, I'm watching... To me, what we're witnessing is the crumbling of the sexual revolution. Like, that's one of the... One of the... Yeah. One of the... Yeah. And one of the byproducts of that is the manosphere. Mm-hmm. That's one of the byproducts of the, the brokenness of the sexual revolution and this idea that male sexuality and female sexuality are just equal and it's just social conditioning... And people want to say that so that we can have this ridiculous idea that we're that there's no differentiation in the species because people have political, you know, whatever is that. But but on a practical level on the ground are really really damaging. Mm. Um, but just because a relationship, whether you're a girl or a guy, because guys feel used in relationships as well, just in in different ways. But whether you're a girl or a guy, just because you had a bad experience doesn't mean that love is not real. But a lot of times people will say that just because obviously they're trying to protect themselves. Yeah, yeah. But you can't protect yourself by locking yourself in solitary confinement. I mean, if you lock yourself in solitary confinement, everybody absolutely, you know, you, you'll be protected from the, from what people can do to you. Um, yeah, they say look, the walls that we build up around ourselves oftentimes become the, the, the prison cells. Yeah, they're prisons. So you got to think about that as well when you're, when you're doing it. Um... Uh, decent song is a 7.4 for me. The 7.8. All right, dear listener. We are not going anywhere, and neither nope. should you. Blue Oyster Cult is next. Blue Oyster Cult is next. More cowbell. Then out. Sorry out. Gone.